In this video, I'm about to show you how you can open a liquidity pool position with the Crystal DeFi app and after it automate it so you can have it generating fees for you non-stop, hands off, you don't have to worry about a thing. Shout out to Ravi City, the user who on a previous video suggested me to do this content. So thanks for the suggestion, I hope this helps you out. Now let me just get started by saying that Crystal does support six major chains that overall they do run a lot of volume. I'm talking about Ethereum, BNB Smart Chain, Arbitrum, Polygon, Base and OP. When it comes to protocols or DEXs that they support, they have the biggest players out there. Uniswap, PancakeSwap. These two alone, they are the biggest DEXs in DeFi. And then we're having Camelot on Arbitrum. They're a huge Actually, they're the biggest liquidity hub on Arbitrum. Then you have SushiSwap and QuickSwap, which are on the Polygon blockchain. They are huge, huge players, but they also deploy in other chains, not only Polygon. And last but not least, we have Thena Finance. From all of these protocols, actually, Thena is the only one that only deploys with one chain, the BNB Smart Chain. All of the others, they support multiple chains. They even support all of the chains that Crystal has here on display actually. And if you want to know more about those protocols, I have covered all of these DEXs on previous videos in a friendly way for even beginners to get acquainted with the protocols and see what those can offer for them. So if you want to check that out, refer to the description, all the links will be down there. And maybe you heard about another protocol that does automate your liquidity pool positions called Aperture Finance. I also did cover that protocol and I will also link that video down below. But when it comes to which one is the best, well, I gotta say that when it comes to supported DEXs, Crystal does take the lead. After all, they have all of these six huge DEXs that are supported, while Aperture only has Uniswap, PancakeSwap, and Aperture Swap, which is their own um, in house swap. So, when it comes to offer, I gotta say that Crystal does take the lead. But now that we got that out of the way. Let me just go ahead and start showing you how you can set up your liquidity pool position and from there on automate it. At the same time that I will show you how everything is done, I will comment and explain you some of the features with a little more depth so that you understand best how everything works. Now, the first step is opening your LP position. For that, we'll go on to the Explorer tab or here on the left. There's going to be stablecoin pools, blue chip pools, and best APR pools. If you want to select a different chain, right now it's showing us stuff on base. So you would have to click here and select another chain from the list. They support six overall, like we just covered. But for the sake of the video, I won't delve into it. I'm just going to go ahead and select the best blue chip pool right now on base. So it's going to be wrap if paired with die. So you can see after we select the pool, it shows us all the options. So I'm going to go with the, the one which is paying the most. Let me sort this out by 24 fees per TVL ratio. So I'm going to go with the first option. From here on, you have two choices. You can either click the plus icon and that will be a more direct approach or you can click the, the pair and pull itself. It's a more of an intermediary step. It will give you much more detail when it comes to setting up your position. So we're gonna cover both, I'm gonna show you both. So let me just show you right now what pops up when you click the plus icon. So then this window pops up. It's pretty much already set to go. So you can set your minimum, your maximum. You can select from zap in and manual and I would advise you to go zap in because it's much more simple. Manual is the older way to provide liquidity. You can also choose that, of course. But the main difference between manual and zap in is that with zap in, you don't even have to deposit a token, which is for the pair itself. For example, you don't have to deposit DAI or wrap Ethereum. You can even go with something else as long as you have it in your wallet. You can choose it, you can zap in, and Crystal will take care of everything in the background. This is a really cool feature. So in this case, you only have to go ahead, connect your wallet, select the amount you want to deposit. If you never deposited before through Crystal, you will have to approve the usage of both tokens. 
Dai and wrap Ethereum. If you're providing liquidity to, to something else and you never uh, gave approval for using you in your wallet, you'll have to give those approvals, all right? After that, yes, you will be allowed to zap in. But this is just a more streamlined approach to deposit into your position. Let's go back and I'll show you the other one which gives you much more information. So the other option, like I said, you can click here on pair slash pool and it will open you a much bigger dashboard with much more depth of information. So it shows you the TVL of the pool, the volume for the past 24 hours, also how much fees it generated, uh, the pool tokens, contract addresses are also featured here. Then you can go ahead and select the price range. You can toggle here the slider at will. You can also set the minimum and price and maximum price manually. It shows you the current price. On the right, you do have this graph that shows you how the price has been going and fluctuating for the past few weeks. And in the green dash line, you'll have both your maximum and your minimum range. The yellow dash line will show you the current price so you can see how far you are from the specific range you are playing with as of now and you can adjust that at will before depositing your position, okay? So the cool thing about this dashboard is that it, it gives you a bit of an idea of how price performed in the past and how it can go in the future so you can try to encompass all of that and uh, of course you're going to be kind of assuming that the price will remain within these specific ranges and it's a nice feature i like it a lot so you also have here the auto select price range if you don't want to do it yourself they give you three options the narrow one which will be five percent above and five percent below you can see it's very tight here in the graph on the right uh, the best wide which will be 30 percent above and 30 percent below and full range this will give you the least apr it will pay you the less but you will never go out of range then you have your amount of liquidity to deposit here that you can use to simulate the rewards that you will be earning and have in mind that as you select these auto price ranges the estimated earning fees will be also updated so you can see the best narrow one will give you the highest rewards but you will also be the riskier because it will be a much tighter range that you will be more often going out of potentially you can also calculate impermanent loss with their built-in calculator but from here on if you click add liquidity it's just popping up the same type of window that we saw before so this is a more intermediary step to provide liquidity but at the same time it gives you much more information now with the zapping function everything is much more streamlined like we covered i just have to select the token i want to deposit in the amount i want to deposit then you click zap now after you approve the usage of the tokens for example if you've never done that before obviously and then you'll have to confirm zap now you need to go to your wallet sign the transaction and after you've done so you just need to, to be a little bit patient until the transaction is mined in the blockchain and just like that it is done now if you go here onto your profile on the left you click that tab and it will show up all the positions that you have open I selected this one that I just opened ethereum paired with DAI now we're gonna click on automation now we'll have to click on new setup so let's get to it now it's going to show us a little bit here of information on three main aspects trigger setup new range and settings trigger setup as the name implies are the conditions that when met they will rebalance your position they will open a new one close the old one and now you are experiencing automations and those conditions are time buffer a below current rate percentage and an above current rate percentage if you want to read data in other ways you can select here instead of percentage price or also the ratio the composing ratio of the liquidity pool so you can see here the current ratio 72 percent of my position is 
compromise the V-theorem and 28% of die. This is specifically useful if you want to rebalance your position whenever you hit a certain ratio. For example, whenever you get 100% worth, worth of Ethereum, you can design that to be the trigger for rebalancing your... So it depends on what you like to work the best with. But overall, these will all do the same thing. They're just different ways to portray the same type of information. I'll go here with the percentage and it shows us the current rate or the current price of Ethereum. And you'll have three main aspects here. Time buffer, below current rate percentage and above current rate percentage. The time buffer is particularly useful to avoid spikes in the market. So let's say for 20 hours of the day, uh, Ethereum price will be remaining stable at 2,500 die per ETH. But there's four hours of those 24 hours that one day has where the price of Ethereum just goes above or below that. So it's not going to be worth it to follow along those market spikes because you might be locking in impermanent loss and you will also end up paying gas fees since you're opening and closing positions. In order to avoid that, that's why the time buffer comes in handy. If there's these spikes in the market, you can avoid that. Personally, I like it to have a time buffer of at least 6 hours, if not more. So right now, as things are, it reads just like this. If the current rate or the current price that you can see here in the graph on the right, if it drops 20% below the current price for one whole hour, if that happens, you would be creating a new position. And the same is true if the price goes up 20% above the current price for one whole hour, okay? This is how it reads, this is how it will work. So you'll have to, knowing that, prompt in how much hours you want your time buffer to have, or maybe you don't want to have a time buffer, you want to constantly be on top of the current price and generating fees. You can also toggle on and off the above or below current rate. So if the, let's say if the price drops, you don't want to, that to be the one trigger, you can do that. You can toggle this off and only if the price goes up, that will trigger your position. So that can be also a strategy. These are some things that you as a liquidity provider need to account for yourself. So you can see here in the graph on the right that on green, that's your current range and the yellow are the trigger flags. So you can even adjust the above and below percentage to meet your range. And if you do that, you will know that you will be generating fees non-stop. Whenever you go out of range, a new position is created. But account for the time buffer, of course, because this amount of hours, those are the ones that you are willing to wait in order to trigger a new position. So if you go out of range for, in my case, six hours, only after that, I will be deploying a new position, which means that I won't be generating fees for those six hours. The new range is basically the new range of your new position. As simple as that. You can also check it by percentage, price, or pool ratio, and you can insert the minimum and maximum ranges manually or play along with the slider here on the right. It goes the same way. Last but not least, you'll have settings. You'll have settings for auto compound, recurring. And what auto compound does is that whenever a new position is opened, if you have any unclaimed fees, those will be deposited. They will be compounded into the new position. You can toggle it on or off. Usually, personally, I like to have it turned off because I like to be claiming my fees manually and if I decide to put them on the pool later, that will be my decision, but I don't like it to be automated in that way. And recurring, also you can turn it on or off, but if you have it on, it means that whenever the triggers are met, a new position will be opened endlessly. Now then you have minimum fees, I'm not sure what these are, but Probably these are the minimum amount of fees that you need to accrue in order to auto-compound. Like I said, I never use this function all that much, so don't quote me on that, but that's what I believe it does. Then you have the gas fee ceiling, so if you don't want to pay a lot of gas, and this is particularly useful if you plan to provide liquidity in a high-paying blockchain such as Ethereum, 
maybe sometimes it's not worth to open a new position even if you go out of range and that's why there's the gas piece ceiling here to in order to help you to avoid extremely high gas fees that overall they will eat into your profits then you'll have pull slippage and swap slippage also that you can play around as you wish personally i just let, let it be at auto and then there's the end time toggle so this will be a feature that you can turn on and off at will and basically what it does if you turn it on is that you'll be prompted to provide a specific date after which this automation will be no longer valid so it's like an expiration date let's say you want to have this specific set of features working for a month you can do that and after all it gets deleted and you'll be no longer prompted to automate your position with these specific settings you can also do that it sort of does the same kind of thing as recurring but with the specific date in mind so you can turn off recurring and let your expiration date to run this for a whole month and after one month it gets deleted it stops automating your position according to this strategy so after that you'll just have to click approve you go on your wallet you accept the transaction so let's take a look overall at what i did here I had a time buffer of one hour there's going to be a below and above current rate of eight percent so this is going to be extremely aggressive and then the new range will also have a minimum and maximum eight percent so overall it's going to be 16 percent range and this is just an example don't do what i do i'm just showing you how an aggressive range set might look like so as it is right now i don't want any auto compound as well and i want to let it be recurring so it's going to be an endless cycle whenever it gets triggered new position will be opened and i'm okay with all the other features here so i'm gonna click approve now i'll need to go on to my wallet and accept the transaction and after you accepted the transaction you will see that now on the automation tab it will show you your auto rebalance positions so it's showing us the trigger the new range that the auto compound and the recurring are toggled on how many times it has been executed so far which is zero i just opened it total fees generated the time buffer and setup created time at any time you can come here on the edit button and just change some of these settings or you can delete the position entirely if you click edit you can come here and again change all of these and toggle all of these parameters so this is how you set up your own automation with the crystal defi application thank you for watching guys if you have any comments or if you want to suggest something that i bring here on the channel leave a comment on below take care you know how crazy crypto can get and i'll see you on the next one